How body fat loss affects the face. Have you ever been told that you have a baby face? Perhaps you're like me and you store a lot of your body fat actually in your facial region. In this video, I'm going to discuss how and why body fat can greatly affect the way your face looks and how you can mitigate the effects of body fat, not only on your face, but on your entire body overall. So I personally believe that being as lean as possible is really the most optimal for your health. As I keep saying in almost every video recently, there seems to be this trend for large bodies in our society. And I don't think it's a good trend that's going on right now. We are seeing that even more, you know, youths, you know, children and adolescents are starting to suffer the effects of obesity. Um, you know, and it's not good. And I can only imagine what all of these new, you know, cultural tastemakers, if you want to call them that, are promoting these days. I don't really follow a lot of mainstream entertainment sort of cultural trends as much because I'm just not interested and I don't really have the time. I find more benefit from content creation rather than content consumption. I just have been like that for the most part when it comes to social media and just the internet and mass media, sort of that kind of world in general. I was listening to some podcast a long time ago that said, why would you want to watch a freak behind a green screen in a suit being carried around on a string when you could just make your own content that's better. It wastes your time watching that. Why don't you wait why don't you use your time to to make something? And maybe one day you'll make something better than these crazy lunatics behind the screen. Anyways. Body fat is really unhealthy and obviously we need a certain amount to survive but beyond that you really really don't need much more for men it's like maybe like three to five percent for women it's maybe like 10 to 12 percent or something like that you shouldn't need much more body fat than that i know that's countercultural in mainstream fat acceptance society however it really isn't that unhealthy be at that body fat percentage that I just listed. When you are, you're going to maximize everything about your life. When it comes to aesthetics, however, it's going to greatly affect the way your face looks. I look like an entirely different person even whenever I change between 10 pounds here and there. Especially in my facial region, you can't see features when I get to a certain weight. When I get trimmed down to the current weight that I'm at now, you can see a lot more features in my face. You can see more of my cheekbones, more of the maxilla region, more of my jawbone area, the ramus. I can see more of that. Even my... I'm not going to say that my lips get bigger, but they look different and they're more defined. It's easier to see them. Whenever I gain weight, I don't know if it's just the mouth region just becomes puffy and then my my mouth area just looks more puffy, more marshmallow-like, <laughs> for lack of a better term. And I'm sure that you, the person who may be watching this, might experience similar results. There are some people out there who are like this, although I will say that perhaps not most people 
are like this when it comes to body fat accumulation. It's, an, it's kind of abnormal to have this sort of feature about yourself. Most people sort of gain weight mostly in their stomach, but I kind of, I gain weight in like a couple places. I gain weight in my stomach, my chest area, and then my face. The rest of my body doesn't really gain all that much weight. My legs don't, my lower body doesn't really gain that much weight. My back, not really. My arms, not really. And you can see, in, I, I've put up a lot of progress pictures recently. You can see, like, pretty much the only main difference when you see my transformation picture is my stomach area. That's about it. I'm, yeah, I'm one of those people. I'm the unfortunate outlier that has to really trim down to see my abdominal muscles. A lot of people probably don't have to do that. A lot of people probably could only have to get down to like 150, 160 pounds. They're good. They can see pretty much every little detail in their body. However, I'm not like that. And on a side note, I will say that it seems that a lot of these fitness moguls seem to be very ignorant of that. Because they, they, in their world, everyone's, you know, built like them. Everyone has a good genetics like them and that everyone else sort of just doesn't work hard enough or has the wrong diet and workout, which could also be true. However, I'm just saying um, their advice is not for 100% of the population. I'm someone who, you know, while I may appear to have good genetics, they probably are not as good as some people may believe. They're not the best. Yeah, my genetics may be top tier, but I have work ethic genetics. Most people don't put in the hours that I would put in. Most people don't have the dedication that I would have because of my genetics. It's it's a mentality that I have that's different than most people. Most people aren't willing to think outside the box in the way that I do. Because when it comes to especially aesthetics and in relation to the main topic of this video, sometimes in order to gain muscle, you have to think smaller. You have to think backwards. You have to think trimming down rather than building up. Why not reveal what you know is already there? That's my mentality with fitness. Reveal what's already there. Even if you have the smallest amount of strength, the smallest amount of muscle, if you, for example, flex a muscle and touch it and you feel some you know, material there, some buildup, right? If you feel some tissue there, you have enough of a base to where you can just trim down and you will see the muscle revealed. You don't have to gain more. Now you could obviously gain more, maybe trim down later. However, do you want to wait that long? You want to wait like years out because that's really, realistically, if you have that kind of plan, it's going to be at least a year minimum before you get to sort of your ideal look. Whereas if you just trim down now, you would get to a very impressive physique within months, at the most actually, because especially if you're not very overweight or out of shape to begin with. You know, you could probably nip that down to like a month or a couple of weeks and you're you're pretty much most of the way there. I'm more of a Greg Doucette mentality rather than a, you know, Alpha Destiny mentality, which is that you should main gain and then bulk. You're better off staying lean in the process and then building from there. And then if on the way you start to, for example, like gain more body fat, guess what? You're only like a couple weeks away from being shredded and lean again. 
Whereas a lot of other people, like, not to call out Alpha Destiny, but what he um, promotes is people focus more on building up rather than cutting down, which he doesn't always, like, practice that because he he sometimes likes to experiment because he recently did a long cut. However, I just, I'm just saying for the average person, you know, the average person that doesn't have, you know, hours to spend in the gym all week, like perfectly calculate their diet out and have this like picture perfect plan and strategy, you know, your best bet is focusing on trimming down. And especially in this day and age where people have all kinds of crazy work schedules where they can't always get enough sleep. Yeah, you know, just trim down. And if you do trim down, guess what? You're going to change the way that you look and greatly improve your facial aesthetics.